All right, guys, it has been exactly three months since I purchased this Husky 80 inch toolbox from Home Depot. A lot of you have been asking me to do an updated toolbox tour. So this is it right here. Again, this is the Husky 80 inch toolbox tour. It does come with a hutch and a side locker and it comes with three, it comes in three pieces when you buy it. So sometimes they'd be able to sell you the whole thing, but if you are ordering it, it more than likely will come in three pieces on a pallet. This toolbox ran me about $1,200 when I bought it from Home Depot. I believe that's what I paid uh, during that time, maybe a little bit less, but that's around the price that you would pay for this box. Let's start off with opening the top hutch. Let's see what's inside it. Again, it is not on any hydraulic lifts. It's just ball bearing slides. You can push this lid all the way back. But however, the lid does stay you know, you get like four inches of open space right here. That's kind of a negative for me. I don't like that whole uh, four inches stick out on the hutch lid, but fortunately that's just what you got to deal with when you buy this box. So again, here's the inside. I did install just a fluorescent LED light in there that I got from Harbor Freight. And what I did was I just mounted it on top. You'll see a video linked right up here on how to do that. Anyways, let's move on. I just have a uh, steel mat right there. It does come with a thick rubber mat right here for the top hutch. And then also I got a ultrasonic cleaner, as you can see there, it's inside my toolbox. It, does, it is pretty loud. So what I like doing is when I throw my parts in there, I just close the hutch lid and it creates more of a condensed noise inside the box rather than making the shop super loud. I really like the strip here on the back. It is mounted. And unfortunately it is mounted when you buy the box. So uh, if you wanted to move it, I guess you could, you know, drill out the two screws here, two screws there, screw them out and, you know, take it out if you want to, just to kind of uh, conserve more space or mount it to the bottom if you would like it that way, you can do that. But I just kept it the way it is. Here we got a mag clip that holds all of my spark plug sockets, various kinds. You got anywhere from 13 16 13 16 flex, three quarter, and then your 5 8 spark plug sockets, and then a 5 8 gear inch flex as well. Bought a little bit magnetic holder from Harbor Freight. As you can see, it's got just holding all of my bits that I use on a daily. I use these quite often. These are just magnetic nut sets, extended reach magnetic nut sets, and I use the 5 16 and 3 8 the most. We also just have uh, three tools mounted now. We used to have this whole wall full of wall mounted, all of my Milwaukee guns, tools, impacts, drills. I had everything mounted here full of Milwaukee, but I kind of removed it just to get more light to shine down onto the top of the hutch or bottom of the hutch. And I did that just because when you work on carburetors, you want to you know, see and have a better, more light when you're working on objects here on the top. I do work on chainsaws here as well. And also I do, again, all of my carburetor cleaning. So I need the most amount of light to shine down onto the top. So that's just, just, just one reason. Again, you can, you know, buy these hooks from Home Depot and mount all of your guns or whatever here if you would like, but I just kept it this way. These are my top three Milwaukee tools, my little M12 impact. That is not fuel. It's just a regular impact. I have a Phillips bit on it. And the reason I have a Phillips fit is because in small engine repair, you deal with a lot of Phillips head screws. So I just have a Phillips bit on there. It's probably the most one I use other than the three eighths impact or uh, nut set. I constantly change those out, but we got a three eighths Milwaukee fuel stubby impact. That thing right there will remove your zero turn lawnmower blades, any lawnmower blades on any type of mower thing is a beast. I don't even have to, go and buy the half inch Milwaukee high torque impact. That thing will do just what it needs to uh, remove any blade basically. So next we got a three eighths Milwaukee fuel ratchet. I do have a boot on it. I was thinking of getting a boot on this one too, but whatever, maybe, maybe next time, I don't know, next year or something like that. But if Milwaukee has any sales on the boots, I know they're not that expensive, but you know, it's just, it's just really for aesthetics and kind of keeping your tools clean, but I don't really mind getting a scratch here and there. But anyways, let's move on. We just got a, uh, oh, I forgot about the uh, Milwaukee supercharger. It is charging a battery right now. 
but that thing is kind of loud but it does charge m12 batteries super fast and i do have one m12 battery right now but i got the xc 8.0 charging currently got just a busted knuckle garage toolbox it's just a little uh little toy i got on the in the toolbox hutch i got a key in there and i just got some extra uh, notepads and such i also have a control for the led lights that you'll see that are inside the locker just controls all the lights there but we also have a Braun flashlight from Harbor Freight, flexible, rechargeable. I have just a regular uh, little one US quart, uh, I don't know, cup holder, just holding all my random, you know, business cards and uh, charging cables and whatnot. So I got a little mini, mini flexible tripod that I use for filming. And I also got a Craftsman big magnetic tray also got a mini Pittsburgh magnetic tray here. Have two more, but they're currently being used with snow on snow blowers. So uh, yeah, that's the hutch. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Also on top of the hutch, let me show you what's up here. Basically anything up here is just uh, stuff that's not, that won't be able to fit in the box. We just got my Milwaukee M18 radio. We got carburetors, old carburetors, junk carburetors, parts. We have a M12 grease gun by Milwaukee. I use this thing on a daily when doing snow blowers and riding mowers, zero turn mowers. We have more small engine parts in there. We got a bunch of shop towel rags. We have super clean products at super clean scent. Uh, we have more small engine parts. We have a Hustler. This is just an engine guard for the back of my zero turn. I took it off because I had, I had Hustler install a bagger instead. So. You can't run these with a bagger system. You have to take them off and they actually install a different one for you, like a shorter one. So unfortunately, this is literally brand new. It was removed uh, from day one. So it's just got a little bit of dust on it. But when I go to sell it, I might remove the bagging system and then install this just to kind of give it a better, cleaner look. We got more rags and then we also have these seven mil nitrile gloves. I like using the seven mil. I think the nine mil are just a little bit too thick but and i enjoy the seven mil maybe the five mil as well but during during this time during covid whatever they only had the seven mil in stock and uh thank you harbor freight for not charging thirty dollars for a hundred pack of nitrile gloves so moving on to my heaviest drawer we got my sockets and ratchets and extensions drawer also we just got a few uh you know specialty bits here sockets and whatnot. This is the metric side. I got uh, Hanson socket trays. If you guys can already, if I've already seen my other toolbox tour video, nothing really changed in here. I did, I think, pick up a few ratchets, but that's about it. Um, again, majority of these are Craftsman and Gear Wrench. I don't have a lot of Snap On or Matco Mac tools, just because I don't really need them when working on you know mowers and chainsaws. I find it quite easy just to go buy a $15 ratchet when you need one instead of going finding a snap-on truck or snap-on dealer and paying $100 for a ratchet. So that's just me, but you know, it's personal, you know, personal preference for everybody else. Again, for small engines, I don't feel like you need to go top branded tools, but that's just me. And again, if you like snap-on, I don't really mind, you know, you just buy whatever you want and uh, nobody should make an opinion on it, but again, Here's just my ratchet collection. I've collected all these tools when I used to work in the auto body shop for a little bit. Then I moved on to small engines. So, uh, you know, some of these are just basic starting tools. I got, you know, Ace Professionals, uh, quarter inch ratchet here. I got Pittsburgh. I got, I think this is a Cobalt. Got Craftsman USA ratchets, quarter inch. I got a quarter inch flex head by Pittsburgh. This is another Ace Professional. If nobody knows, I actually did work at Ace Hardware as a small engine mechanic and now I'm in my own shop. But uh, when I used to work at Ace, we got killer deals on their ratchets and sockets. So employee discounts really came in handy when buying tools at Ace Hardware. But again, they weren't the best quality, but this is a 72 tooth and it's lasted me for you know four years now. So I can't complain much. Just, uh, I think this is a Crescent. Um, just. I have all these ratchets just in case. The main one I use is this one here. And also I like the Craftsman because it's just got the soft grip handled here. Also I got a half inch Ace Professional, kind of a semi soft grip here. We have a long 3 8 Pittsburgh extended, extended uh, ratchet, flex head ratchet. We also have the same thing in like a Stanley version. I think that's what it is. 
Quarter breaker bars that I have never taught, well, never used, and I don't think I'd ever use a quarter inch breaker bar. If you think you know what you'd use a quarter inch breaker bar on, let me know in the comments down below and I'll give you a prize. But I have never used a quarter inch breaker bar. I don't even know why I have these or why I bought them. I guess just to, just to say that I have one, I don't know. Anyways, we got a 3 8 breaker bar. We got a long snap on 12 inch extension and I got this for free from my buddy Ward when I used to work at Ace Hardware. He went to the junkyard and found this and gave it to me. So uh, God bless his heart. But I got a uh, quarter inch and three eighths ratcheting socket wrench. Anyways, uh, we got a, uh, I think this is a half inch swiveled, uh, one of those swivel Pittsburgh ratchets that some mechanics use. I don't really use it, but we got the Easy Outs by Craftsman. We got the Short, Shallow Short. I think this is a Power Torque brand from like O'Reilly's. We got some e uh, deep e torques sockets. These come in handy when you're working on Briggs and Stratton carburetors, the studs. And again, I think we went through those sockets already. We got some triple square bits, uh, more triple square sockets. We have uh, all of my impacts are Crescent and Harbor Freight brand. We got a gear inch swivel here. We have a Matco half to three quarter uh, reducer. And then we also have a Craftsman 3 8 USA socket set. I don't have a metric, but I just have the SAE. We also have just half inch extension, or uh, yeah, impact extensions. And then also some T30 through I think T70 Pittsburgh bits that I hardly use, but those will come in handy when I'm doing like automotive seat belt bolts or whatnot. So we have uh, gear and swivel wobble sockets or uh, uh, socket bits. We also have the Craftsman. This is a, I think this was a USA made set before they switched over to China. But uh, these bits come in handy all the time when working on small engines. I have a few Pittsburgh torque wrenches I hardly use, but usually I know as far as to what torque specs you need. Um, and then if I ever have to use them, I just use them. But anyways, we got the gear inch, half inch swivel impact socket set. This one I got from a pawn shop for $20. This is a steal of a deal. And I use this, I don't know, which one do I use? Oh, this one I use quite often for my zero turn lawnmower bolts that hold the blades, the 15 16 I use this thing, then I grab my Matco 3 8 to, or half inch to 3 8 adapter, and I use that impact gun and it removes the blades really easily. So if you guys are looking for a nice set, impact set, I'd recommend getting one of these. So that's just me. We got a SAE Hansen socket set. We got all Gear Ranch and Craftsman sockets, uh, chromies. We also just have various specialty bits and adapters and all of my extensions are either Craftsman, Pittsburgh. Uh, we do have a few, I think, uh, what are they called? Uh, uh, oh, I think we have gear wrench and I don't think we have another snap on in here, but anyways, those are just extensions, nothing too major. Anyways, moving on, let's go to the left one. We have my wrench drawer, we got SA or metric on the left side, gear wrench. These are just the angled reversible gear wrenches. We also have flex head gear wrenches as well. And we also have, these are Ace Professional. I think these are just the 90 degree angled uh, metric set, small, small set. I think there's about seven of those in here. We have some crescent wrenches, adjustable wrenches. We have the just the big, big sized wrenches. We do have a, a flywheel. Uh, wrench as well. We have mini wrenches. We have thin wrenches by Husky. These come in handy when you're doing carburetor work on um, what are they called? Nikki carburetors and just regular carburetors with solenoids. We have other Ace Professional. These are thinner but not thin but these are thinner than your standard gear wrench wrenches. They're just regular regular wrenches but they're pretty thin. I, I like the size of them so they're a lot different than my other ones. And then SAE Craftsman, we got a few gear wrench in there. Again, same thing, angled. And then also uh, some flex, flex head as well. 
and then you know regular uh, wrenches for your grinder and, and air tools and whatnot so moving on down again not a lot changed just letting you guys know i'm just doing an update because people have told me um, so far the box is holding up so i really like it but if you guys are watching this and you've never seen my other tool video then i guess you can kind of browse around and see what kind of tools i have got a few pry bars different brands i got a emerson Emer emerus tools pry bar this is very good i do not like these pittsburgh pry bars but you know i smash the heck out of them when i need to you know taking off you know rusted uh you know wheels on on the transmission axles on riding mowers so these come in handy you know the shorter one comes in handy as well i think i got this for five bucks when sears is going out of business are they still going out of business i don't even know they've been going out of business for like four years i got a pittsburgh chisel set that i mean i use on occasion i think i'm missing one i use this uh dasco pro chisel as well got more specialty uh, screwdrivers I got a I think this is a t27 and the only reason I bought it was for working on steel chainsaws got various branded screwdrivers uh, these are all um, Phillips and then from starting from here on out these are all flathead so flathead Phillips you know you kind of get the deal moving on down we got our pliers and vice grip drawer various brands again pittsburgh we got a few snap-on that i got from pawn shop we got a nipex uh channel lock pliers we also have you know some gear wrench battery terminal pliers we got Irwin. i don't know what brand this is but these are super thin and they are bent out of shape every time i bend them back they seem to bend out but anyways we got uh you know i think this is a client no this is a milwaukee uh, plier electrical plier we also have some vice grips various kind all these are vice grip brand except these two the duck bill and these um these set or that type of plier i used to use it when i was welding uh, sheet metal or like quarter panels in the body shop those are coming handy but those are pittsburgh brand so they don't seem to like to hold up as far as Irwin brand anyways we got you know oil filter wrench uh, we have also just regular um, you know I, I use these for hose clamps and clamping off hoses for for any type of fuel line comes in handy we also have more channel locks and these are robo grip craftsman uh, pliers that i got from i don't remember his name and i'm so sorry but you sent these out to me probably like three years ago when i used to have my other channel but i appreciate you sending these to me and uh i don't use them now <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry for even asking for them. But anyways, moving on down to the air tool drawer. I seldom use these. Again, it's all depending on what application I'm doing them for. Usually I try I am trying to substitute my air tools for battery power tool Milwaukee tools. But again, I still use my air guns. I still use my cutoff tool. I know Milwaukee makes a a good one now a die grinder that you can throw a cutoff wheel on and uh, you know get rid of your air but again I still need air for you know putting in air in the tires and uh, and other applications so I don't use that impact anymore but I was given that my friend Nate gave that to me for my birthday and thank you Nate shout out to Nate and if he had a YouTube channel I'd post his channel he does but it's uh, he hasn't posted anything for two years so I don't even want to put his channel out there but anyways we got files we got a uh, different type of air leads we got all my rivet guns there we got more cutoff wheels rivets when doing recoils and in the final drawer oh on the left side we just have a battery load tester we have more that's just my portable husky 35 piece thin wall um, impact socket set comes in handy especially those thin wall sockets Got an easy start, jump start by Troy Built for those, um, for those uh, trimmers that have that easy start feature. We just got a Bosch um, saw there. We have a heat gun, a LED light. We have a buffer. We have a paint gun. We have a battery trickle charger, a 12 volt inflator, um, an AL. I think that's an AL 300 charger for my steel. We also have a steel. I think it's an AK charger. I'm not too sure, but. 
different types of steel chargers for the steel battery operated line. We also have a Makita gun in there and a couple M12 extra chargers that I hardly use just because I have that supercharger charges much faster than those regular chargers. Anyways, moving on down, we have, this is just my general diagno diagnosis or diagnostic tool drawer. We have the Hypa, I think this is a eight piece, a carburetor adjustment tool or screwdriver set. We also have some feeler gauges. We got more spring compressors. We have lot, lots various of compression testing tools and gapping tools and ring piston tools and everything to diagnose two and four stroke equipment is in here. Again, you know, your, your two cycle carburetors, your spark plug testers, feeler or more gauges. Uh, you got your push and lube. You have lighters in there. You got a steel EDT8. This is kind of a messy drawer just because I reach in here all the time to grab my tools, but I should definitely organize this um, to make it a lot cleaner. But if you guys got any questions about these, let me know in the comments down below. I don't want to go through all of them. I'd bore you guys to death about two and four stroke tools. Got my hammer drawer, mallet drawer, scissors. We got knives. We have a level, level pro laser, more just a regular a level here, magnetic. We got a stud finder, uh, tape. We have a general purpose utility blades in here. Nothing too fancy. This is just another bit drill drawer. We have all my cobalt drill, cobalt and titanium drill bits. We also have some nut set easy outs. We have more nut sets here, more bits, uh, more different bits. Again, Nate gave me this as well for my birthday. Just another bit set, but we got more hex bits here. Allen keys, we have a uh, uh, gear wrench pick set. We have Maco tools, quick change, uh, another bit set, 16 piece. This comes in handy, especially working on steel. The T27 in here is awesome. It's long, that's why it's awesome. But uh, we got an easy out by Craftsman that I never use just because I never really seem to strip out any bolts. And then just a mini set there and all of my extra wrenches made by Craftsman. And then I have a few wrenches in there and a uh, flexible bit by Irwin or by Dewalt, not Irwin. Here's now where I keep all my Milwaukee stuff. I have my grinder, I have a hacksaw, I have all my M12 and M18 drills and impacts. I do have a 3 8 M18 impact in here with a boot on it. That, unfortunately, um, not rest in peace but it hardly gets used now because I have that stubby. But again, you know, when I, maybe if I loan out that impact, I, or actually I'd rather loan out this impact to somebody that needs it and then use my stubby impact just because I feel like it's got more power. But we got a M12, I don't think there's a battery in here. Yeah, it's just an inflator. We have more M18 batteries. We have a M18 and M12 power source. We have more M18 batteries here and also M12 batteries. So I'm thinking of maybe putting more M12, M18 tools in here when I buy them. So yeah, that concludes all the drawers. Let's go on down to the locker. Again, just a regular Toro uh, magnetic sign here. Here's that LED strip I was talking about. As you can see, it lights up everything quite well. And if you guys want to see how to install an LED strip inside this toolbox, I'll have a link right here posted for you. You can go ahead and check that video out. So as you can see, it's multicolor changing. Uh, we have all of my sprays in here, PB Blaster, Sea Foam, Liquid Wrench. We have WD-40, we have Glass Cleaner. We have White Lithium Spray. We have White Lithium Grease. We have our Steel Hedge Trimmer um, Spray. We have more Gum Out Jets Carburetor Cleaner. We have Rags, we have Startron in here and also Permatex anti seize lube. We have air filters. We have more carburetors, aftermarket carburetors, OEM carbs. We have Oregon Tigon fuel line. We have various nuts and bolts. As you can see, I kind of threw an organizer in here. It comes in handy when you're needing, you know, some kind of nut or bolt. You can just pull this out, see the size you need, and grab it and find a nut that'll work for you. So different various. I also have like a wood screw drawer in here but you guys can probably get it and then some more seven mil gloves in there as well i think i have like a briggs and stratton muffler i don't know why i have a muffler here oh it's because when i was 
wanting to install a muffler on my aerator. Uh, I was gonna buy, or I bought one, but it didn't fit, so. We have a uh, nonstick pan I use for carburetor cleaning now, and then just some random rags and gloves that I, I reuse until they rip. We have some 5W30 SAE motor oil by O'Reilly's. It's really cheap, and I know, but I use this stuff for my most majority of my uh, snow blowers and riding mowers. We have a JNC 770 uh, battery jump. And then hanging, we have a just my coveralls. We have more extra pull rope. And then also we just have these organizers, pegboard organizers. I have all my flashlights, keys, Sharpies. And uh, on this bigger one, we have more flashlights, rags, and a headlamp that comes in handy as well. So yeah, that basically concludes the updated toolbox tour. I hope you guys enjoyed. Real quick, I also wanted to mention that I do have a US General uh, regular uh, nitro glove holder that I'm running real low, but glad I have more nitro gloves in stock. And I recommend you guys go buy them before they run out. But anyways, we got a uh, Matco uh, compound meter. It's a vacuum meter. And then one more thing I did want to mention before we are done with the video is I did go ahead and as you can see, I got some rubber wheel chucks from Harbor Freight and I threw them under this toolbox and I kind of raised it about four inches. And if you guys have not seen the video of where I raised this box, I'll throw it up here. Another link there. You guys can check that out after this video. But yeah, uh, I raised it just because this toolbox is actually pretty short. And me, I'm a 6'2". And as you can see, I still smack my head against that lid. Hopefully you guys caught that. Before I even raised it, I was almost putting my chin on top of that, the top of the box. So you guys know for a fact how low this thing is. Uh, so you do have to raise it. And the best way I found was just using wheel chucks. And I got four inches out of it. I know you can probably upgrade casters, but I didn't want to go through that process. I just wanted to do it to, you know, real fast, just throw some chucks under there, give me an extra four inches. And now it's fine. You know, I duck my head under here, but, uh, Really, you're not really inside the box when you're working. You're outside of the box and just working with your hands right here. So technically, it doesn't really affect the way you know you you work inside your hutch or do whatever. But uh, you know, if you really want to get your head inside of the hutch for some reason, I definitely recommend raising the box. So uh, that'll conclude this video, this three month update. I'll maybe do another one next year. I don't want to do this every month or every three months for you. I think I'll bore you guys to death, especially if it's just me showing the same tools like I did today. There's a few things that I bought, but technically everything is the same. So again, I will do another update probably next year on the box if I still have it. And uh, you'll see you guys, again, I'll see you guys next year if that's all you are here for. If you guys want to check out my channel, go ahead and click on it. I do small engine repair videos and also we have a few tool videos on there as well, but majority of it is small engine repair and small engine business. We also have the Small Engine Nation podcast that you guys can check out. And uh, again, in the meantime, we'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.